Alder Lake processors are finally here, and oh boy, did they make an entrance, ladies and gentlemen. Intel is finally back in competition with AMD. It was only a matter of time, I suppose. The one big drawback with the new 12th gen processors is that they are not backwards compatible with older generation motherboards, and that's because it is using a new socket type LGA1700. This means the processors will only work on the new Z600 series motherboards from Intel, which also brings in some nice new features like PCI 5.0 and of course DDR5 support. So I thought why not go over some of the best boards you can currently buy from ASUS in this video, and in fact one of these boards will be going in my personal rig. Uh, big red version 4, so I'm pretty damn excited. One thing to keep in mind when you're shopping around for a motherboard for your 12th gen CPU is the memory compatibility. Some of these motherboards will be compatible with either DDR4 or DDR5 and it's often labeled right on the box itself. You're only able to use one or the other since they are not cross compatible. And that's because they not only function differently, but the notch is slightly different on these DIMM slots. While DDR5 performance wasn't impressive by any means compared to DDR4, it's still very new to the game and hasn't matured quite yet. But deciding on what platform you want to build your PC now is very important to determine its upgrade path later down the road. So if you guys do decide to go with the DDR4 motherboard, then just keep in mind that you're pretty much locking yourself from future upgrade ability. So when you do want to switch over to DDR5, you're going to have to buy a new motherboard and of course new DDR5 memory. But yeah, with that said, let's start off the video by taking a look at the ASUS Z690i Gaming. This is ASUS's only mini ITX motherboard currently available for the Z690 platform, and it packs some really nice features that you would expect from a full ATX motherboard. I do want to start off and quickly demonstrate the CPU installation because it is slightly different on these new socket types. You still get one lever on the right side, but the cover is flipped upside down. So you would need to pull it open from the top instead of the bottom. Pretty cool. So the board features a 10 plus 1 power stage design with a single 8-pin EPS connector up top and a PCI 5.0 by 16 slot. PCI 5.0 pretty much doubles the data transfer rate of PCI 4.0, delivering 32 giga transfers per second versus 16. With PCI 5.0, you also get to run more M.2 slots off the CPU connected PCI lanes and not lose performance from your graphics card. There are also faster lanes on the chipset, allowing devices to use fewer lanes to achieve their full performance, which just means the motherboard manufacturers have flexibility on where to put them. And that's kind of what we're seeing here, as ASUS stack both of the M.2 slots on each other to take advantage of the limited space. This board is DDR5 compatible, so it will only work with DDR5 memory in dual channel up to 6400 MHz overclocked. Aesthetics wise, it's a great looking all black board. Now in terms of connectivity, we do have a buttload of options in the back here, including a bunch of USB 3.2 Gen 1 and Gen 2 ports with two Thunderbolt 4 ports as well. I mean, the selection here is as impressive as some of the other full ATX boards on this list. On the actual board itself, we have a USB 3.0 and a Type-C underneath the 24 pin, but check this out. There's a single USB 2.0 header over here that you can expand into two ports using the extension cable provided, which is really nice to see on a mini ITX board. In addition to that, there's also an expansion card that gives you more ports. Four SATA ports, a front panel connector, and an extra 5 volt RGB header. I really like the efficient use of space here that ASUS has done with this board. Including that extra 5 volt RGB header, you do have two more that split on the top and bottom. There's a 12 volt up top and a second 5 volt on the bottom, which is nice. A very, very impressive mini ITX motherboard from ASUS. I think this is a solid option for anyone looking to build a, uh, an air-cooled or even a water-cooled system in a small form factor case. I'm definitely going to have a lot of fun with this one for my next mini ITX build, that's for sure. Moving on up the ladder, we got the Z690A Gaming Wi-Fi D4. The D4 means that it's compatible with DDR4 memory only, and for a lot of people out there, this will be the preferred choice since these will be much cheaper than DDR5 compatible boards, plus they will save a lot of money on buying DDR5 memory. So out of all the white-themed Z690 motherboards out there currently, I have to say without a doubt, MSI and ASUS are, are up there in terms of aesthetics. But between the two, I'm pretty sure ASUS is going to be the more um, preferred choice for builders. I mean, this board just looks incredible. We have an all white and silver two-toned color scheme with this mirrored RGB VRM cover. It is going to look gorgeous in a white themed build. It features a 16 plus 1 power stage design with dual 8-pin EPS connectors up top to help with overclocking, which if you're planning on buying a 12900K CPU, 
you won't be doing much of it anyways due to its insane power draw and high temperatures anyways. What you can take advantage of though is the fast M.2 SSD speeds using PCI Gen 4. The board gives you four M.2 slots total to choose from. Connectivity wise, I'm actually surprised that it has slightly less ports than the Mini ITX motherboard we just checked out. While it might have one more USB 3.0 port, it actually doesn't have any Thunderbolt 4 support. The only way you can get Thunderbolt speeds is through the onboard header near the bottom. And speaking of onboard headers, you can expect at least a USB 3 and a Type-C header on the Z690 boards, along with two USB 2.0 headers near the bottom. For the RGB lovers out there, you'll be pleased to find a total of four RGB headers. We got one 12 volt near the top, next to a five volt, and then two more five volt headers on the bottom. We yeah, have overall a very solid mid-range Z690 motherboard from ASUS that offers all the features you would want to build a badass looking white themed PC. Speaking of white themed PCs, I gotta shine the spotlight on the Maximus formula because this motherboard right here is my favorite one out of this entire lineup simply because this is gonna be the motherboard that's gonna be going into my personal rig, my ultimate dream gaming PC later this year, Big Red version four. Welcome to the family, baby. It's pretty obvious why I chose this motherboard. I mean, it is the cleanest looking Z690 board out right now, but it's also packing all the features I'm personally looking for in my build. Let's start with the performance side of things. So this board actually has a 20 power stage design, but it features a teamed power stage design. Each VRM component serves a specific purpose. The PWM controllers control the circuit and the power stages do the heavy lifting from an electrical and thermal standpoint. This all contributes to overall lower temps while improving thermal headroom. Not to mention the board features a built-in water block for the VRMs. With how demanding the new 12900K processors are, I will need all the extra cooling I can get to achieve a nice and stable overclock. Of course, Big Red version 4 deserves the best components. And while DDR5 doesn't have staggering performance over DDR4, it is still the best in the market and I do plan on future-proofing this build, so going with DDR5 is a no-brainer for me, especially when we can expect better performance in the coming years. So when I build my ultimate dream setup at the new home, I'm going to have a ton of gear connected to my gaming PC. So having all the extra connectivity is going to be really important to me. So I do appreciate the extra USB 3 and Type-C ports in the back here. The board also features a USB Type-C and two USB 3.0 and 2.0 headers as well near the bottom. Now for onboard storage, you do get three PCI Gen 4 M.2 slots right on the motherboard, but you do have the option of adding two more using the HyperCard that's included. But get this, one of them actually is PCI 5.0 already. So when those storage devices start coming out, I'll be popping one of them inside this build. But as of now, I'm just gonna keep things simple and throw in only two 8 terabyte M.2 SSDs, which is more than plenty. I also love the onboard start and reset buttons, which will come in handy during my build, along with four of the RGB headers to choose from. But yeah, lots and lots of stuff to be excited about the Maximus formula. I cannot wait to start building with this bad boy and show you guys Big Red version four coming up later this year. So make sure you guys are, whoa, 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 holy crap. No, not like this. <sighs> So yeah, make sure you guys are subscribed with notifications on uh, because you definitely don't want to miss it. So these last two boards are somewhat similar in the sense that they are the highest tier boards that ASUS has to offer. The Extreme is like the bigger stepbrother compared to the Hero. The Extreme is an $1,100 motherboard. So for those looking to get the best of the best, this is it. You reach the top. There's literally nothing else above this. But we will start with the Hero first. Much like the formula, this also features a teamed power stage design with exceptional VRM and chipset heatsinks. Personally, I think the Hero will make an excellent board for an all black anti RGB build, but at the same time, it can still satisfy the RGB lovers out there with its really cool and refreshing individual lit LED display on the VRM heatsink cover. Everything else in terms of connectivity is pretty much the same compared to the Maximus formula. We got the same amount of ports in the back along with the same onboard connectivity, including a matching black hypercard to add two additional M.2 SSDs. I guess you can think of the Hero as the black version of the formula, but without the VRM water blocks. All right, guys, now for the Maximus Extreme. This is an absolute unit of a motherboard and is so freaking heavy it feels like I'm holding two power supplies. I am not even exaggerating. It's also a lot bigger because technically it's an extended motherboard. So what does $1,100 get you, you might be asking? Well, pretty much everything except a back rub and a happy ending. 
We've got a whopping 24 plus one power stage design with monster V-arm heat sinks that extends over to the top M.2 slot, which also has a live dash OLED display. That's pretty damn cool. I'm actually really digging the whole black armor design with the RGB grid display on both the VRM and the chipset cover. They're calling it the Anime Matrix LED display, and it can be pretty much programmed to show off anything with custom lighting designs to unique animations and even live audio visualizations. That's freaking cool. The only other RGB area from the board is from the chipset cover and behind the board, which you can customize using the Aura Sync software. Connectivity wise, you actually get one less USB 3 port compared to the Hero, but in exchange, you do get a 10 gigabit ethernet jack. Much like the Hero, you also get three M.2 slots with the top being PCI 5.0 compatible. However, you can add two more M.2 SSDs using the ROG DIMM module. With a super high price tag of $1,100, you do get some extra accessories as well, like a USB-C deck for your audio devices, an RGB fan controller that supports up to eight fans, along with a triple five volt three pin splitter cable and a black screwdriver to help you build your system. This board is without a doubt catered to the less than 1% of the enthusiasts out there looking to build a high-end overkill system. So yeah, this was a lot to take in, but either way, I hope you guys enjoyed the video or at least found it somewhat useful. If you did, you can show your appreciation by leaving a like, but I guess YouTube is removing the like system in a few weeks, so I guess it doesn't really matter. But anyways, I'll drop a link to all the motherboards I talked about down below if you guys wanna check it out. Thank you so much for watching as always, and I'll see you very soon in the next one.